Gubar Jalal, uh, thank you for joining me for this uh, interview. Well, thank you for having me. It's been um, what I want to discuss with you uh, besides your uh, presentation is what you see as the next step for data-driven marketing. But let me start out by asking you, how do you consider data to have changed the game of marketing? You've been in marketing for sure. the last uh, 17 years, I was... Uh, yeah. I've been in the space for about 17 years. I think the biggest change that probably you'll see is that data is uh, built by software. Mm -hmm. And software is going to allow rather it to be static, which mm -hmm. is just used for information. It's going to be dynamic now, and it's going to be glued within marketing. And what data-driven marketing really should be about is if the more you know about the consumer, wherever they go, offline, online, mobile, etc., and you're able to connect those dots to make an intent happen, you're doing yourself a favor by connecting all the pieces that you have that have been inactive or dormant because you just use them for information or insights or analytics, but you're powering them for automation now of marketing. And all this, this happens in real time. Yeah, well, it, uh, but, but let me in on this. How, how does it work? Well, you know, I, I'm not that smart. I'm not a, I'm not a programmer. No, and no, I'm no. not a engineer by but, but heart. What's but what's the intention? But the, it, everything happens within 30 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So you can basically generate a piece of data within a millisecond, pass it to a data management platform, uh, and within um, uh, 29 milliseconds, it can make a bid to show you an ad across 80 billion impressions a day through Facebook or through search. Mm -hmm. um, you also talked a lot about entrepreneurship. If you are a smaller business or enterprise, what would you recommend that I started out using? What data is relevant to get insights on uh, first? Uh, well, I think the first thing you want to do is, is look at what is available for free, mm -hmm. right? And that's why one of the, the, the models that we're flipping around is we're actually giving software for free that gives you the insights. So it tells you about what people are sharing on your site, what people are copy pasting, what people are uh, engaging with you on social media, what people are actually responding to you based on the emails. All of that is available through our marketing cloud for mm -hmm. free. Now you can pay for it as well through singular services, but our whole uh, path toward um, uh, uh, our strategy is gluing that piece of data and uh, activating it as part of a marketing channel. So you can generate more customers and it can turn into the ROI of real time. Yeah, and tell me a little bit more about this uh, flip and this uh, imitating of open source almost. Uh, how do you uh, make money? Well, what we're doing is uh, we're flipping the model around where you have the companies like Oracle, Adobe, Salesforce that have built their traditional marketing clouds. And they've built them based on um, things that they've been very good at. And they've, like Salesforce still makes most of its money through its CRM software, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but it's built its marketing cloud and it's trying to go ahead and slowly try to understand uh, paid media. So the weakness they have is they don't understand paid media. What we understand is paid media because we've been doing it for 17 years. So what we've done is every software piece that they charge billions of dollars for, we give away for free. And if we allow you to go ahead and have all those pieces of data and software for free, we're flipping the model around where you're only we're only charging you as you spend media. So as you're generating revenue, as you're generating ROI, whether it's through search, whether it's through native, whether it's through Facebook, or whether it's through programmatic advertising. Yeah, in an age of uh, personal personalized advertising and marketing, what future scenario do you envision for the de decision makers within uh, marketing? If you can follow, uh, what, what should they be interested in uh, in regard to paid media, for example? I think uh, the personalization of marketing is going to be about one-to-one -one experiences. And those one-to-one -one experiences are going to be uh, driven on any touch point, whether it's your mobile phone, whether it's your tablet, whether it's your connected TV, whether it's uh, well, your PC. It's going to be an ad, because not because you're on that website, but because it's you. And the data that's around you has told us enough insights to fuel you the right message. And that message might be something that gears you toward a purchase intent or gears you toward the marketing objective. Yeah, and you have acquired 14 companies? 
Yes. Yes. After last week, and 14. And yeah, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, but Cost but me a lot of money, though. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. But, but you have uh, also been working at a very, very high pace. Uh, so you may be uh, able to give me some insights on how we should manage change. Well, change is one of those things that if you don't manage it, you'll get wiped out. Mm -hmm. So one of my quotes that I used in my presentation was about Darwinism, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the strongest the species that survive, it's the ones that are most adaptable to change. And, that and ad adaptability yes. means data. Means data. Data is a new currency. Mm. And if you can go ahead and utilize the data to effectively make marketing digital across all touch points, you'll end up winning. Cool. Lastly, but not less interesting, your company recently acquired the Danish company Cognac. And we acquired your ads, which yeah, is also... also great, Danish, great, yes. Yeah. Uh, what did they have to offer and uh, do you have more Danish businesses in, uh, in sight? Uh, you know, what we look for is great entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and what we look for is uh, great companies that, uh, that we can add value to. So uh, your ads was a great footprint for us to launch because mm. they were in five countries in Europe. So it was a great way for us to enter uh, the European market. Since then, we've grown in other countries in Europe mm -hmm. organically. And uh, Cognac had a great piece of technology that uh, we could add into our uh, uh, dynamic creative stack. So, uh, and it also had great entrepreneurs who just want to win, right? Yeah. Part of the art of, of acquisitions and the art of making them work is making sure that you have the determination of the entrepreneur that they don't think that it's their payday. It's actually not the payday yet. The end game and the vision is what I relate out is trying to be that ninth software largest company in the world. And it's gonna take some time to get there. So you gotta make sure everybody's eyes on the prize and everybody's focused on that. It's a huge ambition and uh, I would just uh, like to say thank you for talking to me about it. Thank you, it's been an honor. Yeah, thank you. Great.